Hello chess fans, this is Rick from chess to impress with a video on Bill Lombardi who passed away on October 13th 2017 at the age of 79. Who was Bill Lombardi? Well, he was an American Grandmaster, he won the World Youth Championships in 1957 in Toronto in Canada with a score of 11 out of 11 that had never been done before and has never been done since. He was also the captain of the winning USA team at the Student Olympiad in 1960 in Leningrad in the Soviet Union and there he scored 12 out of 13. Then he became a Roman Catholic priest in 1967. And yes, he was also part of the legend of Bobby Fischer because he was Fischer's second in the match of the century in Reykjavik in 1972. He was evicted from his New York apartment in 2016 because of rental debt and died on October 13th in Martinez in California. The game I will show you is from that student Olympiad, which is really a tournament for players under 26 years old, which was held in Leningrad, where Lombardi scored 12 out of 13. He was the captain of the winning US team. And in this game he played Boris Spassky, who, who would become world champion nine years later. Let's have a look at the game. Lombardi was black, Spassky was white. Spassky opened e4. The comments I give here are from an anal analysis from the Canadian Grandmaster Kevin Spraggett. c5, the Sicilian, played by Lombardi. Knight f3, d6, d4, c takes, knight takes, knight f6, knight c3, and a6, the knight or variation of the Sicilian, also a favorite of his boss Bobby Fischer, his boss in the 1972 match against the same player, Boris Pasky. Bishop g5, and Straggett writes, Spassky's games did very much to popularize this sharp move. He won many games with it and used it frequently in his 1972 match against Bobby Fischer. This was played 12 years earlier, in 1960. Knight bd7 from Lombardi, and Spraggett writes, Lombardi plays a less popular variation, probably hoping to catch Sp Spassky a bit unprepared. Bishop c4 from Spassky, queen a5, hitting that bishop. Queen d2, protecting the bishop, e6, and Spassky castles. And Spraggett writes, this is Tal's, Misha Tal, favorite move. Some prefer castling queenside, but practice has shown that it is very effective tucking the white king over into the other corner. So he did not, not castle queenside, he went the other way. Bishop e7 from Lombardi and a3. And Spraggett writes, this move never caught on, and probably with good reason. The simple rook ad1 has done very well in practice, and is considered the strongest move here. But Spassky played a3. h6, kicking the bishop. Bishop went back to e3. And knight e5 from Lombardi. Now hitting this piece. The bishop went back to a2. And here Lombardi writes that interesting is knight e to g4. Then he gives this variation f4. Then queen h5 with a mate threat on h2. h3, knight takes e3, queen takes, and g5. All very spectacular. And as I said, Spraggett called this an interesting variation. After bishop a2, Lombardi did not go for knight e to g4, he played queen c7, queen back. Queen e2, and b5, which Spraggett calls a natural move. And a year later, the great Lev Polugajewski, possibly fearing an improvement, varied here with bishop d7 against Spassky. So after b5, the move from the game, Spassky Kicked the knight with f4, the knight went to g4, h3, kicking the knight again, and that knight took the bishop, queen takes, and black castled, 
and Black can be very satisfied with how the opening developed. He has a pleasant position. Rook AE1 from Spassky and Stragat writes, Spassky always had a penchant for this move in similar positions, but here it seems ineffective. Spragat thinks that the rook should have gone to d1. And Lombardi himself also analyzes this game and he gives here this crazy line I will show you. He gives e5 instead of rook ae1. And then d takes e5, f takes e5, knight back to d7. And then rook takes f7. Spectacular. Because after rook takes, there is bishop takes e6. Pinning the rook. Queen takes e5, the line goes on, bishop takes, king takes, queen f3 check, knight f6, queen takes the rook in the corner, and queen takes d4 check, with a winning advantage for black, is Lombardi's conclusion. Crazy variation indeed. Let's go back to the game. Rook ae1 was played by Spassky, and e5 from Lombardi. That knight went to f5 and was taken by the bishop. Pawn takes back and now d5 and Spragat says here Lombardi must have been enjoying himself. Anyone who plays the Sicilian defense dreams of playing this move. Here black threatens to win the white queen and of course he's threatening to win the white queen with bishop c5 with a nice skewer. But Lombardi must have been happy that he got d5 in. And here Spassky made a mistake. He took on e5. And Spragat writes, from a player who will eventually become world champion, this error seems very much out of place. And another grandmaster who analyzed this game, Hans Rey, says that king h1 should have been played. And then after d4, which looks like it wins a piece. Little fork. Then there is queen takes e5. Queen takes e5, rook takes e5, attacking the bishop, so we don't have time to take on c3. Bishop d6, counter-attacking the rook, then knight d5, bishop takes rook, f takes e5, and Ray writes that this position, position is about equal. And that was all after king h1 to start a variation with. But Spassky took on e5, and that was a mistake. Bishop d6 was the answer from Lombardi. Queen back to e2. And here, a very nice move. Bishop takes a3. Did you see that one coming? If you take that bishop, then the knight on c3 is unprotected with a good position for black. And here, white should have played knight takes d5. But it was not Spassky's day. He made another mistake. He played, instead of knight takes d5, he played knight d1. Rook AE8, attacking the queen, and Spragat writes, Lombardi plays with great energy and precision. And another mistake from the future world champion, he played queen F3 here, and that loses a piece, believe it or not. Spragat writes, horrible, white had to try to hang on with queen D2. It avoids the loss of a piece, although black then also has a very good position. For example, bishop C5 check, king H2. Rook takes, queen takes, and this is good for black. So how did queen f3, the move from the game, lose a piece? Well, we'll see it now. Bishop c5 check as well. King steps aside. Rook takes e1. You have to take back. And queen a5 must have been the move that Spassky had missed. It is a double attack on the rook and the bishop. For a second it looks like white can wriggle out of this with knight c3 because now the bishop is protected and the rook is no longer attacked. You have to be careful. You cannot play d4. It looks good. Kicking that knight and then you will win a piece because there is a rook a1 saving the day after D takes c3, which is a big blunder. White actually wins with bishop takes f7 check. And the queen is hanging. Rook takes, rook takes a5, and white wins. 
So after knight c3 you cannot play d4, but you can play the other pawn b4, and that is good for black. The knight is hanging, knight takes d5, and there goes a piece. Spassky took on f6 with check, g takes, queen c6, but after queen c4 he resigned. He's a piece down, he has one pawn for the piece, but that's not enough compensation. This important game gave the Americans the gold medal, and Andrew Soltis, in his work Soviet Chess from 1917 to 1991, wrote, After Spassky lost a highly publicized game to the American William Lombardi on the first board in the 1960 Student Olympiad, he was left off the 1961 team and was eventually suspended from foreign travel three times, a typical sports committee humiliation. And Spassky said about that period that his nervous energy was completely destroyed for three years. So this game had a huge impact on the future world champion. Bill Lombardi died this year on the 13th of October. May he rest in peace. Before I say goodbye, I want to say many thanks to Patrick, to Faith Boost Video Services, to Razi, Johan, Brendan, Christoph, Simon, Nersi, Gail and Evan for their very generous donations on PayPal. I'm looking to buy new software and new hardware and that really helps. Thank you everybody. If you want to support the channel, the link to PayPal is in the description box. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel. Please leave a comment and if you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media. You also may want to check out my Chess to Progress channel. I have a series there on viewers games. I have analyzed there almost 50 games that were sent to me by viewers by email. This is Rick from Chester Impress. Thank you for watching.